Someone says, hello, Latvian Eagle slash Long Tong Yanni slash Latvian Lover. I would love to know more details about the distance and specifics of the deer drive in Wyoming because that shit happened quick and it looked like a real crack shot. I think that was my favorite part of season nine. Was, was the seeing, drive? Seeing an executed deer drive in the back country like that. That was, that was special. That might be the only one that ever gets executed ever anywhere no i'm sure there's a listener that has a hole that they drive deer out of all the time but no that uh outfitter Stuart peterson he's been on that hillside on that mountain quite a few times and if you could see the whole mountain i I think we did a pretty good job in that diagram kind of showing where there was timber and where there wasn't but the diagram is great when it because it showed the diagram first. And I was like, this is oddly specific. And then <laughs> it goes back to showing like the hunt. And I was like, oh, that's because they made it very specific. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I mean, there was a very and we had glassed this strip of timber numerous occasions in the prior, you know, five or six days looking for deer in there. And it did not look like much. And it looked like it was just a strip of raggedy you know wind blown uh i'm guessing fir trees you know a lot of that stuff that they call the shintangle um is that what they call it shintang shintang yeah cuz it tangles your shins when you walk through it just like grows low cuz it's just got to be like a t- trying to like grab on to the rocks cuz it just like this these this strip of timber was just on a basically a giant scree slide hillside i mean that went on for you know, a thousand yards either direction and hundreds of yards up and down until you either made the ridge or you actually dropped down into like the main timber, which would have been, you know, below tree or at tree line. And uh, he just knew that they hole up in there. And that morning we had bumped deer that had headed that way. So he thought there was a pretty good chance there'd be deer in there. And again, he had executed this drive prior to doing it that time. He told us a couple stories about other hunters that had sat where he was sending me. And where I went to, we had already spent a couple of days sitting and looking at deer in the bowl below us on a ridge across from us. So I had a pretty good famil- familiarity with when he was explaining to me where to go with what it looked like and what I was going to see there. And I knew what he was talking about when he t- was talking about game trails that wrapped around that hill and where they went because again i'd been sitting above them for a couple days so it didn't happen much faster i mean it there was enough time that uh the photographer and i walked to the spot that might have taken five to ten minutes we set up there there was enough time for me to kind of like i did i set up like a long range shooting position if they kind of came out low and got farther i needed a better rest and then i had a sort of a shorter range shooting position where I used my tripod and I had a V attached to the top of it where I was going to shoot, you know, hundred yards or less or whatever. Um, and I sort of explained that to the camera a few times and we were like, all right, now it's time to wait. We'll see what happens. And it probably wasn't more than five or 10 minutes. And you gotta remember when a deer is pushed on a drive, they move so quick through that country that the the pusher is probably just standing at that deer's bed when you shoot, even though you might be a thousand yards away from it. I mean, that's how fast they move from that spot to where, where I was. There's a good chance that Stuart had just gotten to those beds and said, ah, oh, look at that. There was some deer bedded here. And then he probably heard me shoot. You know? They left those, just like we showed in the diagram, they left that little strip of timber and just wrapped right around the horn of that ridge and uh, didn't drop down, didn't really come up, and then came basically right underneath me. And as far as the crack shot goes, I saw him coming from a ways. Um, the photographer that I had with me, is, is he's a great photographer, but just hasn't done too much work with us yet. And so it was happening fast. That deer was coming, and it was in a lot of, a lot of small trees. It was hard for him to pick up. But... Um, that deer was walking pretty slowly by the time he finally got over to me, and I think I shot him at like 60 or 70 yards. It was really a pretty easy shot. 
on your muley, it sounded like you were sawing through the brisket. If so, have you ever tried sawing right next to it where the ribs attach? It's all cartilage, and it's way easier even on elk. W-A-A-A-A-A-A-Y. Way easier. So much easier. Making a point there. <clears throat> Was that for me? Uh, for either one of you. Who I, I'll tell, I know the guy. I know what he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, it's easy to cut over there, but here's the thing. When you come up with your gutting incision, I'm going up the middle anyway. The hair is real short along the brisket. And so I cut there, and then I cut there with my saw, which is I don't I don't view it as very hard. And then you can just kind of open it up and it's like opening up center based in the middle and you can get in there and cut the, the esophagus and and uh trachea and everything and, and gut it. And you can go down to the side, but then the other thing is when I take the rib slabs off, this way they're symmetrical. But sure. Especially if someone had skinned it all the way back, I might just go up the side like that. Yeah, I guess on a deer, I don't know, we might shave away that brisket and just throw it into the grind pile. But uh, I don't know why it looked hard because I think zipping through the brisket of a deer is usually pretty dang easy. Yeah, I don't. It's it's enough easy enough where I don't really think about it being a thing. How did you feel when you were looking for your tag and you came back and found that the guide had cut your deer clean in half? Did you see it? Did you see it as disrespectful to your kill? Absolutely not. These guys, we were hunting with some guides, Landon and Stuart Peterson, Crooked Sky Outfitters. And these guys are like phenomenal hunters, very hard workers, but they are like, they're horsemen. They're packers. If you Like a big part of their job is they are packers. They know how to move things from point A to point B, what be it people or materials, on horses. He has a way to carry a mule deer where you got a horse with a pannier on each side, and he knows where to cut it so that that front half and back half weigh the same. When you're loading horses, it might not seem like this would be like an actual thing. A pound matters. The 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 the, the panniers on a pack saddle, like they're balanced there. They're just, they're setting there balanced. Um, there's some lashing and stuff, but primarily, like, if they're out of balance, it's not going to ride. So he goes up to the third rib, whatever the hell he is. He cuts the deer off at the knees, goes up to the third or fourth rib, whatever, cuts the thing in half, knows how to tilt its head over to make up the difference, puts it in a pannier, and he knows that that mule deer is now cut in two halves that weigh the exact same amount. I'd never seen that before, and I thought my eyes were deceiving me in the episode. I thought someone else had killed a deer <laughs> in the like time that they had last shown your mule deer, and then when they came back to it, because there was like two halves of a mule deer there. Yeah, we were trying to get. I mean, I, it, it was. Uh, I would have liked to have taken part in that process, but as you saw, like it, we already had a snowstorm. It was very late at night. I was trying to find the deer tag. Everything soaked. He didn't mind. He, he just, no, I, I thought it was genius. I, mean, I didn't know about that trick. You, you guys weren't familiar with that? Cutting no. them that way to, so they weigh the same? It's the first I'd seen it. No, then he t- cocks the head over the top of the the crossbars there and shoop, out of there. Yeah. If, it, if, if, disrespect, if, if there could somehow be disrespect in getting something out cleanly and effectively, um, I, don't, I don't see it. 